Hey, I'm going to show you how to plug together and configure a new radio studio in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Rachel Bernard, and I'm going to show you how the Axia IP Audio Studio goes together fast while Kirk Harnick explains it. you got a few minutes, right? Come on. Thanks, Rachel. And it will take just a few minutes. We're going to put together an Axia Element, Axia Power Station, a CD player from Denon, a microphone from Electro Voice, a couple of speakers, and an Omni Audio Processor. We're going to connect these things together and configure them to make a radio studio in just a few minutes. You watch. <laughs> IP audio is where studios are going all over the world. Axia makes it very easy to implement IP audio. When you build an IP audio studio, you're really building it like a computer network. You just attach something to the network and you share that resource all across the network. So a console can use a CD player or another console can use the same CD player. You can plug a microphone into the network and use that microphone in its main studio or use it in another studio if you want to. You can have a satellite receiver in your master control center and use that satellite receiver or a codec or a hybrid in any studio that you want to. So whether you're building one studio or a dozen studios, IP Audio makes things go a lot faster. We're going to show you how Axia implements IP Audio, including browser configuration, right now. Rachel's going to be plugging in all this equipment while I'm describing what's going on. So Rachel, please go ahead. The main component in this studio is the Axia Power Station. Inside the Power Station are several key components. Audio I.O., including mic input, analog input, and AES input. Also some outputs, analog output and AES output. Plus, there are contact closures, GPIOs, to control equipment like the CD player or like the on-air light. We also have inside an Ethernet switch to tie everything together and to let you connect Ethernet live wire uh, qualified devices right to the power station. There's also a mixing engine, which will mix together the various IP audio streams upon the command of the Element console. The Element console also has a power supply, and it's inside the power station as well. So everything you need to run to build this studio is inside the power station. It's fanless. It's got big heat sinks in the back, and uh, it's going to be very easy to plug together. This Element console has two modules which have four faders each, and it has one module that's the navigation and monitor module. It looks just like a regular console that you might recognize in your own radio stations now. In this console, though, the console is really kind of like a mouse that's connected to the power station. There's no audio in this console whatsoever, but all the commands are instantaneously transmitted to the power station unit, and the mix engine does exactly what you tell it to do. Rachel, the cool thing about plugging together an Axia system is the connectors are very easy to do. There's no soldering involved to get the audio all plugged up. And what I have right here is an adapter that's very popular in our industry. It's made by Radio Systems. There's another company called XI Audio that makes them as well. And this adapter goes from XLR, this is a female XLR to come out of the back of the uh, CD player, into an RJ45 connector. Then we can take any length of Cat5 patch cable that we need plug it into the RJ45, and plug this into the back of the Axia power station. Yeah. So please uh, plug these left and right into the back of the CD player. And then while you're doing that, uh, I'll tell you, you can make these Cat5 cable lengths any length that you need. You don't have to use the these adapters either. You can go ahead and just make your own if you want to. You can take a Cat5 cable and strip one end off and put some XLR connectors on there. Uh, oh, Rachel, you already did it. You, that was easy. <laughs> you already got it in. So she's plugged in the uh, RJ45 on the other end into the, an analog input on the back of the power station. This is going to bring the CD player audio right into the back of the power station, and we'll configure that in just a minute. So we've got the CD player connected now, at least as far as the audio is concerned, but wouldn't it be convenient if we could start and stop the CD player from the console yes. itself? Uh -huh. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I built up a little cable to help us do that. Now, i got to tell you, it's possible to do this over IP. The same connector that carries the audio could carry commands to start and stop the CD player. Only problem is, it's not built into the CD player. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> here's the remote connector for the CD player. Rachel's going to plug that in the back of the CD player. And on the back of the power station, I'm going to plug in the other end of the cable so that we have GPIO, or general purpose input-output, from the power station to the CD player. And when we configure it, it'll work great. Rachel, what does every disc jockey want? Microphone. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So we've got a microphone right here. We're going to plug the microphone in. Power station makes it really easy to plug in a microphone because 
the mic preamp is already built in to the back of the power station. You see the XLR connector uh -huh. on the back of that? Number one, each power station has two mic inputs, and if you add a power station auxiliary unit, you get two more. Plus, you can put a microphone, if you use an external preamp, you can put a microphone into any input you want anywhere on the network and make it show up right here on the console. Rachel, now that the mic is hooked up, we're going to want to know when the mic is turned on. Like, maybe let everybody know when the mic is turned uh -huh. on. Well, studios usually have a, a tally light, an on-air light, and we do as well. I built a little circuit to make it light up with the GPIO closure from the power station. So, if you got the connector, let's plug it right on in there to the number one GPIO output. Now, when we configure this in the power station, when we turn any microphone on, it'll make that light light up. Rachel, would you like to connect a, uh, an iPod to the console? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of engineers don't really want that to happen, but how many disc jockeys do? So here, you hold the iPod for a second. Okay. And what I have here is a little cable that uh, I bought at uh, the music store. It goes from eighth inch uh, tip ring sleeve to a couple of XLR males. And remember earlier, we had the uh, XLR female mm -hmm. to RJ uh, little patch cord. Well, this doesn't need to be very long, so we've used a short patch cord. We're going to plug these um, XLRs in like that. And now at the other end, we have this, and you know where that goes yep. on the back of the power station. Okay. Oh, here, I'll hold the iPod. Okay. So if you plug in, uh, plug that in the back there to one of the inputs, doesn't really matter which one, we'll figure that out later. And we'll plug this uh, eighth inch in right here. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to work great. We'll show you in just a minute. All right, we've got several inputs going into the console. Now we need to get some things out of the console. And one of the most important ones is the control room monitors, right? So the disc jockey and all of us can hear what's going on on the console. Well, which output of the power station is going to be the control room monitors? Well, the answer is it's any one you want. There are six analog outputs on the back of the power station, as well as an AES output, a couple of those. Or we could have the output anywhere on the network. But OK, for convenience, let's just make the output one of these. So Rachel, on the back of the power station, there's some analog outputs. Just pick one, plug it in. And that's an analog output. We're going to make this, this is the other end of the cable, okay. we're going to make this to be the control room monitor output when we go configure the console. Now, our speakers don't have a, an RJ connector like this, mm -hmm. so we have another adapter from Radio Systems. Mm -hmm. We'll plug that right in, and let's see, this is the right-hand right. speaker. Red. Yeah, red-right, so there we go. Plug that in the back of the speaker. Okay. Great, and now the left channel coming out of that is this side. Okay. Let's just run a cable from this speaker, or rather from this adapter, over here to this speaker. Okay. How convenient, there it is. That's so easy. Yeah, <laughs> we'll plug that in, and now we have our speakers connected to the system. We just have to configure it. An Axia network and the devices that are on it are very easy to configure. Why? Because every device on the network has a built-in web server. That's right. That means you can access every device with just a web browser. And you can use your favorite one, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari like we have here, or Google Chrome, any browser you want to, as long as it supports Java. So we're going to go into the power station right now and begin configuring the microphone, CD player, the iPod input, and the control room speaker outputs. Rachel, let's go to the right IP address. It's 192.168.2.50. And now here we are at the power station control center. So this screen tells us some things about the uh, power station control center, mm -hmm. like uh, how much memory, what Linux version it's using, and things like that that you might need to know if you're doing some troubleshooting. But the first thing we need to do is scroll down a bit. So just scroll down a bit and go mm -hmm. to the I.O. subsystem main, okay. and let's go to the uh, sources. So we're going to define what's coming in there already. Well, this is how it comes from the factory, the source names uh, 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first two are mic level. In fact, look over on the right, and yeah, you can see that there's where you set the microphone uh, gain yeah. for mics. You can also choose whether you have phantom power turned on or not turned on. You can choose enabled or disabled. We got a mic that doesn't need phantom power. Okay. Um, so uh, also we have a couple of AES inputs. If you have some devices that have an AES digital feed, you can bring them in right there. So first of all, let's call our microphone the microphone. So go up to source number one because okay. that's where it's um, physically plugged into. And let's, uh, let's change the name on that. So yeah, just highlight that. Okay. And let's change that to read, uh, let's say, Mic 1. Mic 1, OK. OK. Now, the channel number, actually, I assigned these earlier. Um, I have a little scheme by which I assign channel numbers. I take the IP address of the device that we're talking to. So look up there at the IP address. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's .2.50. Okay. So I make my channel numbers all start with 50 and then go on uh, 01 through 08. That way I don't have a duplicate channel number anywhere in the system. Oh, that's easy. Don't worry about the shareable part. Leave that at no. That's how the system works now, to be uh, backward compatible. Mm -hmm. And the stream mode should be live stereo, but you do have some other options like standard stereo or disabled. Uh, so let's leave it on live stereo. 
Input gain for that mic, well, you know what? I tested this mic already, and 51 dB is just about right. So we can go ahead and hit 